This episode of The Turning Shed is brought to you by The Walnut Log and Nova Woodworking. Smart tools, powerful solutions. Welcome to The Turning Shed. My name is Jeff and today we're going to be working on gilding. Uh, I'm going to show a couple of techniques on a couple of bowls that I've already got turned and uh, give you a, a brief introduction into the technique of applying a gilding wax. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is I made a shamrock bowl yesterday, which was uh, St. Patrick's Day 2016. I made a shamrock bowl and on the bottom I have my signature, but I also used the gold gilding wax to highlight the detail on the bottom. And then the second piece I'm going to show you is a cherry bowl that I turned a couple of days ago and uh, purposely made a textured medallion in the center where I show you how to apply a gold acrylic paint base coat and then a blue, uh, it's iris blue, gilder's wax on top of that to highlight the detail. And then at the end of the video you can see um, some still photos of these two pieces uh, so you can get a close-up uh, view of the detail and the, the wax. Um, briefly about gilding, this is uh, a many centuries old technique. It can be traced back to uh, the ancient Egyptians and ancient Greeks um, and technically is, it is defined as the process of applying a, a metal such as gold or silver or bronze to uh, another material. It could be metal, it could also be uh, wood or plaster or, or paper, um, applying this, this metal as an embellishment. And um, traditionally, uh, originally, a gold leafing was one of the primary forms of gilding. Now we've evolved past that. Uh, you can gold leaf, you can, you can silver leaf, you can burnish the metals onto different uh, mediums and uh, you can also use an electroplating technique as well. Uh, what I'm doing today is I'm using a, a wax based material that has either colored pigment or powdered metal pigment mixed into it and I'm using that as a surface application over a texture. Uh, what I use today is um, I'm using brushes, stiff bristle, stiff bristle and soft bristle brushes. Uh, I'm going to show a surface sealing technique. We'll talk about that. I'll show uh, what I did with the base coating and, and, and get these two pieces made for you um, in total. So um, if you have any interest in gilding, stick around. We're going to have some fun. The first piece I'm going to work on today is this little shamrock bowl. I turned it yesterday. Uh, the wood is oak and I did uh, not only applied dye because yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. I did Kelly Green dye on the outside. I did detail on the bottom, my traditional signature, and I also did some pyrography design and color on the inside. This was a lot of fun and we'll do, uh, we'll do dyeing and pyrography at some point in the future. But today I want to talk about uh, doing this gilding process. And the gilder's wax that I prefer to use is from Baroque Art. On this piece we're going to use gold. And um, I'll show you how I like to apply on something like this. Uh, I, you can do it without having a base color on the bottom. Um, there are pieces that don't require a base color on the bottom. Uh, the bottle stopper that I did in my last video. I could have gone back and put some gold over the detail just to raise the, the, the focus on that and, and provide a little, more, a little more richness and a little more interest. Uh, the reason I didn't is because of the way I had it turned. Um, as people use the bottle stopper, they're going to rub their thumb over it. And even if it has a, a brush on sealer, um, there's still a good chance that that gilding is just going to come off through use. So I decided 
the wood didn't need it, it was pretty enough, the detail didn't need it, it was clean enough, and I did not need to apply any additional uh, embellishment such as a gilding. Now on this piece, because, because it's uh, a shamrock piece, um, I don't have a pot of gold, so I'm going to put a little gold on the bottom. It's j just for fun, just to take it to the next step. The Gilder's paste that I'm using is technically a wax. The, the pigment or the powdered metal is suspended in a, a paste wax and that allows you to uh, apply it by rubbing with your finger, rubbing with a cloth, or using uh, a brush depending on the application. Uh, because I'm doing a small piece of detail, I want the control of having a brush. Um, now the downside to using a brush is you have a higher chance of getting the, the gilding wax into the detail. So you have to use a technique called dry brushing. Uh, this goes back to uh, ceramics manufacturing that I did years and years ago where you, you take your brush and you load it, you wipe off some of that, and then you very lightly brush across the detail in a manner that keeps the bristles from going down into the detail which would get your uh, which would get your gilding wax only on the top surface of the textured ridges so we're going to go ahead and do that I've got my gold and I'm just going to load up my brush Alright, I've got gold on the brush, and now this is a, this is a multi-application process. You don't want to try to you don't want to try to paint in all of your gilding in one step. You want to you want to do this, build up layers as you need. Um, depending on the type of piece, you can even uh, spray a, a a lacquer on the piece to seal the previous coat so that you. Don't mess up what you've already done, and it, this will give you the ability to build up many, many separate layers, which will make your final look a whole lot more, um, a whole lot more nice, as it were. All right. So what we're going to do? We're going to take the brush, and we're going to brush across the detail, going across the detail, uh, going in the direction of the spiral. Or, no, going against the direction of the spiral. So the spiral here is going clockwise. Because of that, I want to go counterclockwise to not drop the bristles into the grooves, if at all possible. And you just lightly brush across the top. Keep going in the same direction. Turn your piece as needed. And then come across the center. and keep going. I'm not putting much guild on per pass, but it's building up a nice gold color. All right, we're going to load up a little bit more, and we're going to head out into these other ridges. Now I'm going to try really hard to keep it inside this detail ring. I don't want the gold on the bottom of the bowl, I just want it highlighting the detail. And uh, you know, if you need to get a smaller brush or a bigger brush or, or, or whatever, that's fine. You don't have to use what I'm using, and every piece is going to be different. But the technique is pretty much the same. You just brush it on. Take your time. All right, catch the light. You can see where we're getting to there. It needs more. There's too much green showing. Load up again. Very carefully, very lightly.
back to the swirl. And you just keep applying until you're happy with the results. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think I like where that's gone. Okay, now, because this is a pigment that is suspended in a wax, you can see down here that I've got a powdery buildup. Don't wipe that off. It will smear badly. Uh, easiest way that i found is to just give it a blow, and then it's gone. Uh, you will get that as you brush around your detail, that little, little flips of... of gilding dust, I guess, are going to come off your brush. And you need to remember that this is a wax. If you touch it, you will smear it. Um, and it is almost impossible to get off, especially if you're working on uh, a previously finished surface. I don't want to have to try to rechuck this and turn off a mistake. Uh, another thing you want to remember is to keep your fingers out of the way or, or be aware of where this dust is not only coming from, but where it's going because I've left fingerprints on things that I've had to go back and work around uh, just because I wasn't paying attention. So pay attention to where the, where the dust is going. Okay, the next piece we're going to do is a piece of cherry that I turned a couple of days ago. Uh, it's just a, a standard bowl, pretty, pretty nice, pretty simple, um, but I put some detail on the inside. And uh, I did this piece with the intent of shooting this particular video. So I've got the detail. Um, the wood is, is relatively neutral in, in color. Um, and after doing an Instagram poll, I have decided that I'm going to use Iris Blue Gilder's Paste as my gilding color. So let's get that open and show you. That's a really pretty color of blue, uh, but because it's so dark, I don't want to apply it straight to the wood. I don't want the wood color underneath. I want something that's going to give me maybe a touch more contrast, so I'm going to use a gold acrylic paint first as a base coat. Application of this is pretty simple. It's a water-based paint. Um, I prefer using a soft bristle brush. This will give me a little bit more control and allow me to get this paint down into the grooves. I want the paint down into the grooves on this step. So as always, make sure you take your time, load your brush, and just start working that paint into your grooves. Normally I'm doing this inside at my work desk, but because we're doing a video, that's why I'm out here. It is a little awkward for me to be standing here and painting, but anything for you guys. I like that. I think I have the grooves filled as best I can. Smooth things out a little bit more. And then we let it dry. Okay, uh, using mineral spirits we have cleaned our brush. I'm using the same brush that I used in the gold gilding and uh, the gold acrylic paint 
base coat is now also dry. So let's go ahead and apply the blue gilding wax. Same deal. We're just going to do a dry brush. Very carefully, watch your fingers and go across the detail. That, that's just that is just enough color to offset the detail pattern and by having the solid gold color which is also uh, metallic and reflective down in the bottom as a base coat you're getting more more glow more shine from underneath than you would have if I would have just applied the blue over the natural wood and that doesn't do anything to distort the beauty of the natural wood at all. And, you know, as I do my turnings, I like to leave the inclusions. Um, this coloring or discoloring is all natural. That's all, you know, I want people to see that. But I wanted that detail highlighted in, in the center of this piece. Anyway, that's really cool. I like that a lot. All right, we will do cleanup of this brush later. I've got one more step. We're going back to the soft bristle brush. Uh, the next step, because the entire rest of the bowl is finished, the finish is already finished. I used uh, Hampshire Sheen finishing wax, and, and the uh, entire piece is done, with the exception of this gilding area. I'm going to use a brush-on sealer. Uh, this is just a water-based sealing product. Uh, I got it from one of the hobby shops, Michael's Hobby Lobby. We've got both of those in town. I don't remember which one I got it from, but I, that's where it comes from. I'm sure you can buy it online as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this um, Instead of a spray lacquer or, or an additional wax, we're going to use this and just very carefully brush over the surface of the gilding. We don't want to smear, we don't want to spread. Uh, we do want to get down into the grooves. So use your light and turn your piece so that you can see where you're getting coverage in any places that you might not be. covered putting gold on the bottom of a shamrock bowl on top of dye and we talked about adding a gold acrylic and putting an iris blue gilding wax on top of that to highlight the detail. You can use this technique on, on almost anything. Um, it, picture framers use it, furniture makers use it, anything that you want to highlight or add, add uh, either a touch of color or a richness by using one of the golds or silvers or coppers. You can do that quickly and easily 
without the time involved with gold leaf uh, or the expense involved in an electroplating or, or, or things of that nature that you might not have the equipment for. You know, I, I can't electroplate, I understand the concept, I don't have the setup to do it. So uh, for me, using a Gilder's wax is uh, a, a much more viable process that I can use to take my pieces, you know, just up one more notch, up one more level, um, and you can use it on almost anything. Uh, remember that when you do the, the, the wax, you do want to use a sealing coat of some sort, either uh, a brush on application like I showed you, um, a clear clear gloss nail polish would, would be fine. Um, or use, as on this one, uh, spray lacquer, you know, that it, it just blends in with the entire rest of the piece. And now I'm certain that the bottom is, is protected, it is glossy, it is all the same, and that gold detail is going to be protected from people picking it up, putting it down, moving it around. Uh, it'll be just fine. Um, if you enjoyed today's project and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions or comments that you want to uh, leave for me or ask me, please feel free. The comment section is there and I try to respond as quickly as possible. Um, I've got a whole bunch of projects that I'm thinking about and I'm going to try to put out more content on a more regular basis, so please subscribe if you're interested. Uh, I have all of my contact information down below in the description and I will include a link to, or not a link to, but I will include the uh, information if you want to find me on Snapchat. I've been using that a little bit more lately and I think it's a viable business tool where I can show you in more of a real-time manner what I'm doing. And uh, for instance, the Shamrock Bowl, I went from start to finish either in still video, still pictures or very short video clips with some narration. I, I just told people what I was doing and uh, we went from uh, a block of wood to uh, a turn bowl to applying the dye to then going inside and doing the wood burning and uh, you can get an idea of the thought process involved in, in more of a real time manner. So if you if you do Snapchat, add me, follow me. It's it's a lot of fun and I'm having a good time and you get to see a lot of stuff that other people aren't going to see just because I can grab quick clips of content and put it out there. Anyway, this has been the Turning Shed. Today was gilding. I hope you had a good time because I did too. It's a lot of fun. Try it. I think you will be able to take some really cool pieces and make them even better just by adding uh, a little touch of color, richness, metallics, whatever, by using the gilding wax. Take care, and I'll see you next time.